Welcome to Sega Studios, folks. Uh, my name is Konstantin Anzopoulos. I'm the studio director, and I'm here to give you a tour of this absolutely awesome place. Our team is working on the game for the 360 and the PS3, the next generation consoles. The overall philosophy of this game is to live the fantasy of Iron Man, right? I mean, that's kind of where we start. We put you in the shoes of Iron Man and let you save the world. One of the things we did when we finished Iron Man 1 was we took a look at uh, the original game and what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. The things we wanted to do to improve flying was make the controls even simpler. The flight is phenomenally better than the first game. It's just a lot more contextual. You really don't even need a tutorial. If you've played any of a number of console games out there, the control scheme for Iron Man 2 will be immediately familiar to you. So when you get into the game now, you just get in and go. Destructibility. When you have super-powered characters in battle armor slugging it out, there's going to be collateral damage. Buildings are going to be destroyed. Glass is going to break. The team does a great job of bringing that destructibility and that chaos to the gameplay that we didn't see in the first game. We wanted to get the action up close and in the player's face. We've changed the mechanics for melee. If another enemy comes behind me, I can leap off of that enemy and slam this guy in the head and then jump back to the guy who's fighting. You really feel empowered when you're hovering in the air and you're bashing guys left and right with your fists and your feet. It's almost ninja-like. In this game, you can actually load in different fighting styles into the armor. We have a better AI unit, which is artificial intelligence. So now the, the enemies react and think instead of just coming at you like a bunch of idiots. That brings a new layer of strategy to combat that the first game just didn't offer us. We've created a completely new and unique story that lives in the film world. The voice of Iron Man right now within the Marvel comics is Matt Fraction. He actually won an Eisner Award for his Iron Man series. That's basically the most prestigious award you can get in comics. He really has the voices of the characters down cold. And he really brought the story to life. The story in the game is a collaboration among Matt Fraction, Michael Kirkbride, and myself. So the three of us together put together this story and evolved it over time. Iron Man is very sleek, he's the Ferrari, War Machine is the Hummer. I mean, War Machine is this amazing juggernaut of artillery. From player standpoint, you can choose which one you rather see yourself as. In some of the levels, there'll be differences in the way you handle things. Some of the things that were challenging as Iron Man are easier as War Machine, and some of the things that were a breeze as Iron Man are more challenging as War Machine. War Machine has a complete different set of weaponry. Every set of melee attacks that he has is completely different. He's not going to hack the terminal to get into that room. He's going to slam that door open and just, you know, tear it apart, get in there, and rip everything up. You basically get to choose, decide how to load out the characters. You can create your own weapons. You can create your own munitions for weapons. If I want to have nothing but missiles and rockets all over my suit, I can do that. The vision that I had for this game is one where the enemies are significant threats to Iron Man. Starting with Crimson Dynamo, who is this massive, hulking, red brute, bent on destruction. And then it, it all culminates in Ultimo. That's a 600-foot dot. I mean, the scale is amazing. You're about this big, and he's about that big. You want to feel heroic. So we made sure that the threats are real, even to Iron Man. We're just saying, hey, pick up the joystick, get in it, and feel like a hero. That's what the game is going to offer to you. Great story with great classic enemies, but shown in a new context. It's going to make them fresh and interesting all over again. I could sit here for about an hour and a half and tell you all of it, but the best way to see it is to play it. Doing voiceover like this for a game is a lot different for film actors than what they normally do. Tricky business the Iron Man filmmakers are in, portraying character when you can't see the face of the actor. If you want to know what's going on, we have the voice. We have the uh, rare privilege of working with both Sam Jackson. Specialist, get me the latest tech, tech set. Data. Tech set data, tech set data, tech set data. I wasn't prepared to say that word. I practiced all the other shit, but not that. And, and Don Cheadle. Zep Torrent. Is that as fictitious as it sounds? <laughs> so having the actual voice actors in is essential to the game. That's what makes it an Iron Man 2 game. Don Cheadle's War Machine is just amazing, both in the film and in the game. And to have him participate in the video game was just a stroke of luck for us. I think this is his first video game, which is very cool. Yes! Thank you, Tony, for making a suit that can handle that. Don Cheadle is a machine. I mean, he plays War Machine, but he charged right through everything we had in front of him. Very professional. He would do retakes, whatever was necessary. Oh, I love this suit. He knows his character, so a lot of the time we were relying on him for basically the establishment of the characters. Your next line down. Two, word. You got word. it. I know. 206. I'm, no, no, I no, think uh, Rhodey's really saying word. Yeah. <laughs> War Machine is an extension of Rhodey. I think he sees himself as being a protector of what is needed in this country. He came in and he was Rhodey, and it was wonderful. And when people 
people load up the game and they load up War Machine, they're really going to believe that they are Don Cheadle as roadie as War Machine. And the reason we got Sam Jackson was actually because of Don Cheadle. Was Don this difficult? He was texting me while he was here. Pulled out his phone and he texted Sam. He wanted Sam Jackson to know that we were good to work with and this is going to be a great experience for him. And he was going, don't f with this. This is crazy. <laughs> and within a week, we had Sam Jackson. I've known who Nick Fury was for a very long time. All of a sudden, I picked up a comic book one day and that was my face. And it was Nick Fury. So I said, well, okay, this is cool. So when they make the movie, I guess I'll get a chance to play Nick Fury. Copy the living hell out of that. Uh, Nick Fury, as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., is the ultimate badass. So he's going to be directing you as you go through? It's a pretty powerful position. To bring him into the game, not just his voice, but his likeness as well, it provides that connection and that authenticity. A little respect wouldn't hurt. I actually went and directed all of the voice acting sessions because it's so important to get that correct tone, that correct feel. AIM has Jarvis and can power him up. What's the threat assessment? All you can kind of rely on is if you believe the dialogue that you're saying is, you know, kind of in concert with what your character beats would be in the film. And it seems like they're the same guy. War Machine out. No, nah, that's not it. War Machine out. There it is. As a voice director, I really try to let the actor do a lot of the work. Two in a row, pressure's back on him on 64. Hey, you're Tony Stark, right? You think of something. It's about letting them have the creative freedom to bring the character to life. This is Stormbreaker 1. What can we do for you today, Rain Man? We get the groove, we start working well together, and uh, then you just roll through. And it's amazing how fast we roll through these things. 60 lines an hour sometimes. That was great, Sam. If you look at a movie set, you have days for two lines. I love working on games like Iron Man 2 a little bit more. Uh, great step down, yeah. stand by for playback. Because it gives the chance for an actor to be an actor. You just put yourself in in that frame of mind and you just, you act. I, I got him! I kind of got him! Take the shot, Tony! It's an opportunity to keep my hand in the universe and hopefully I'll play a bigger part in those films and not just keep showing up and talking to people. I actually kill somebody. Good work, everyone! Awesome job, fellas! Lamb of God is one of my favorite bands. Lamb of God! Lamb of God! Lamb of God rules! A couple guys over at Sega, big fans of the band, and reached out in hopes of us getting together and doing something cool with the new Iron Man video game. I mean, just the simple fact that they thought of us to use in such a high-profile game is extremely flattering and awesome. Iron Man's a pretty tough dude, I guess. You wouldn't want to have, like, the Backstreet Boys or something in the soundtrack. I called up my buddy, Raymond Herrera, the drummer in Fear Factory. I asked him if he knew the guys in Lamb of God. And I'm like, well look, I know those guys really well. They're gonna be coming through San Francisco in about a month. I'll introduce you to the guys. We'll see if they got any extra songs. So they had just released a new record at the time. So they said, hey, we want an exclusive new track from you guys. Or are you into it? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. We suggested the song to Sega and they heard it and they agreed. They get it. Like the minute we sat down, they just got the idea of the business behind games and why Lamb of God would be important to this. The song's called Hit the Wall. This was one of my favorite songs when we were doing the record. We definitely wanted to keep it because it was a great song. Here we are later in the game. Perfect opportunity after having time step away to be able to finish up this track. As all our music was just dark and heavy metal and those things seemed to tie very well into comic books and video games. We wanted to make it as brutal as we could and that's basically what Lamb of God does. Everybody's giving their opinions, we're trying it different ways, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, flipping things around, ripping it apart, trying every way, you know, to make it something that makes the hair in your neck stand up. Check, check, one, two. Check! Microphones at deafening level, that's about right for The it. basic tracks already existed from the first session. What we're doing now is all the vocals. This will be the first song I've recorded the majority of the vocals for at my hometown in a long time. Randy's all about the ritual. I like to leave home to record vocals. I can't come home to my wife and be a normal person. I just turn into a freak when I'm recording. If you catch Randy doing his warm-ups before the recording process, he's walking around with his warm-up tape doing the And what's crazy is he sounds great. He's got like this very like rich, low voice and he's singing awesome. Where do you get the wow? I used to be and am still a big nerd. I read a lot of comic books since I was a kid. I always thought Iron Man was cool because he's probably the most plausible, believable superhero there is because he's not some sort of weird mutant who can phase through walls. He's just a really smart guy who built a suit. But what the song is about really is how sometimes someone's ambitions and how your own personal agenda 
can sometimes get in the way of your dignity. Kind of like Tony Stark's before he turned into Iron Man. Out of uh, everyone in the in the band, I have played in my life quite a, quite a few more video games than they have. It looks like it's a, a good uh, fly around and blow stuff up kind of game. Can't wait to see it when it's completely done and play the heck out of it. Hopefully it will be beneficial to us and that our music will be exposed to more people. Video games outsell movies and CDs right now. I think it is a really good chance for us to expose our music to people that maybe they wouldn't otherwise hear. And maybe this is going to be someone's introduction to heavy metal. Hopefully they don't even know when they're playing the game. There's no album release of the song. You can't download it off the internet because nobody has it.